Thank you so very much. I am deeply honored to receive this honorary degree from my alma mater. Even though I didn't work nearly as hard for this degree as all of you did for the diplomas that you'll be receiving today. Thank you so much, Chancellor Lovell, for the invitation to celebrate with you here today. As you've heard, I'm the Chancellor of the University of California at Santa Cruz. But more importantly, I'm a Panther. And I've been able to reconcile being a Panther with my current university school mascot, the Fighting Banana Slugs. <laughs> I'm a proud graduate of UWM, class of 1966. UWM made an enormous difference in my life, and that's why it's such a pleasure and privilege to be with you today. So welcome and congratulations to the class of 2011. When I look out at you today, I can imagine what's on your minds. I know that for parents and families, this is an emotional day. You're bursting with well-deserved pride and probably shedding a few tears as well. This is a milestone in your life and in the life of your graduate. They've achieved so much. You've helped them along the way, and you have every reason to feel proud of them. So congratulations. For, your gra for you graduates, I'm guessing that you're feeling a mixture of emotions today. Relief and euphoria at finally being finished, and a range of feelings from excitement to outright panic about what comes next. So let's talk about that. First, the euphoria. No wonder you're feeling great. You're finished. And if, let's see if you could relate to this. Early in my career, I was reading a student evaluation of one of my classes. And I was very pleased to read that the student had written that if she had only one, one hour left to live, she'd want to spend it in my class. <laughs> that sounded pretty good to me, right? And then she went on to say, because every hour in your class feels like an eternity. <laughs> so if you have ever had a class that felt like it was never going to end, those days are over. But now, let's talk about what's ahead of you, the mix of excitement and worry that you may be feeling. Some of you know exactly what you're doing next, and some of you don't. Whatever your next step is, whether it's graduate school, nonprofit work, military service, an internship, or a job, let me tell you, you've already taken the most important step for your future. You're joining an elite club today. Only a handful of people in the world graduate from college. And in the United States, only a small percentage from a university of UWM's quality. And yet one of the biggest challenges college graduates face boils down to confidence. It's natural because most of you will leave here and face something entirely new and different. So here are my words of wisdom. In the face of that uncertainty, 
Try not to dwell on the unknown. Instead, stop and reflect on what you've accomplished. It'll help, really. I speak from experience. When I went to graduate school after UWM, I was scared to death. You see, I didn't come from a long line of academics. On the contrary, I was the first in my family to get a college degree. My parents owned a little Venetian blind shop on South 2nd Street in Milwaukee. But they made it clear to me and to my sister that we were expected to go to college. She became a panther too. And I'm grateful for my, to my parents because I truly discovered my path in life right here at UWM. When I applied to graduate school, I looked at Madison, Harvard, Cornell, Caltech, and Berkeley. And I ended up choosing the University of California, San Diego. In part, I chose to go there because it has an excellent physics program, including a Nobel Prize winner on its faculty, but also because it was close to the beach <laughs> and it had a satisfactory ratio of female to male students. <laughs> hey, I was only 20 years old. But when I got there, I was petrified. I was surrounded by students from the top private universities in this country. I wondered if I was as well prepared as I needed to be to, in order to compete with them. By the end of my first quarter in graduate school, I had learned that the education I got right here at UWM was every bit, every bit as good as what students got at MIT, Harvard, or Princeton. That was decades ago. That was decades ago, but it's still true today. The tricky thing about self-confidence is that it matters so much, but it's not always there when you need it the most. So as you make this transition, remember that you are among the best of the best. As graduates of a great public research university, you have what you need to be successful because you've gotten a well-rounded education. One of this country's greatest strengths is that our universities help students to learn how to think and how to solve problems. Unlike many parts of Europe and Asia, where universities focus more on vocational training, in the United States, we prepare the whole person. Whether or not you've been, you, you, you've been able to fully test this outside the university yet, you have learned how to take on new tasks and new challenges, how to apply yourself, how to set aside your ego and learn something new, and how to work cooperatively with other people. That's what your UWM diploma tells people, including future employers. Beyond that, I hope you've had great moments of discovery here. That's certainly what I got at UWM. I still remember my freshman English class where I learned that great writing technique, that great writing requires more than just technique. You have to have something of substance to say. And I'll never forget what physics professor Bob Greenler did for me. He gave a rather dorky 19-year-old who liked physics an internship to investigate sun pillars, a phenomenon no one really understood at the time. Our work produced a significant breakthrough, and Bob turned to me and said, do you realize that we know more about sun pillars than anyone else in the entire world? That was an amazing moment a true aha moment. I know you've had epiphanies of your own because that's what high quality college education is all about. 
The kind of education you've gotten here at UWM is why this country leads the world in science and engineering, in business, arts, and medicine. You, right now, are as ready to, as anyone in the world to, to discover, to teach, to solve problems, and to lead others. And now, here's something you might not have expected to hear on your graduation day. This education you've just completed, this great system of public higher education that is the foundation of American leadership, is under attack and is at risk. So in the spirit of giving back on this day of celebration, here's a responsibility you can take on as a new graduate. You can play a role in preserving America's great public universities. The University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee, like the University of California, Santa Cruz, is a public research university. These campuses are idea factories where people make discoveries that change lives. They are opportunity factories that open doors for thousands of students every year. In California, and probably in Wisconsin as well, two-thirds of our state legislators attended one of our public colleges and universities, which is why it's galling to see so many elected officials turning their backs on our public universities. these awesome engines of opportunity and economic growth. Across the country, just as in Wisconsin, the quality of our public universities is being jeopardized by budget cuts. Now, I recognize that we are still in the throes of the biggest economic downturn since the Great Depression. And historians tell us that in tough times, we are fearful and more anxious. We have a tendency to retrench, but not always. In 1862, in the darkest day of the Civil War, when it was unclear whether or not the Union would even survive, Abraham Lincoln signed the law that established this country's public university systems. That visionary action set us on the road to economic development for the next 150 years. I told that story to a legislator in Sacramento a few weeks ago, a man who's reluctant to fund public higher education. He had a big portrait of Lincoln hanging on the wall of his office, but he didn't know this particular piece of our history and I was more than happy to fill that gap for him. So I would ask you to take two simple steps to make sure quality education is available for future generations. Make a donation to this campus. At UC Santa Cruz this spring, students launched a student-to-student -student fundraising drive. They're asking each graduating senior to contribute $20.11, 2011, to fund scholarships for future students. Secondly, make your voices heard. Contact your elected officials and tell them about your own experience. As graduates, your voices carry the weight of your degree and your success. It's vital because the temptation to cut university budgets, to give in to short-term thinking, is very, very real. You live in Wisconsin. You've been the eye of the storm, and now, Leaders of higher education like me 
are watching as both Wisconsin and the University of Wisconsin system debate the future relationship of the Madison campus to the rest of the system. So that's my message to you about giving back as you prepare to move on in your lives. But let me come back to you and your future. I want to let you in on a secret. It's really okay to have no idea what your next step is. The truth about my own college aha moment was that I had no clue about how life-changing that would be for me. And if somebody had told me back then, as I was sitting in your seat, that I'd someday end up as the chancellor of a great university, I would have told them they were nuts. From where I stand today, with the advantage of a few years, let me wrap up by offering three pieces of advice to you, each somewhat paradoxical. Number one, be confident in what you've learned and stay humble. There's a lot left to learn. Number two, be focused and persistent about pursuing your goals and yet remain open to unexpected opportunities. Great careers are built with a combination of strong focus and serendipitous discovery. And number three, work hard on whatever lies ahead, but also take time out to think the big thoughts. Put your feet up now and then and reflect on what you're seeing, what you're learning, and the impacts you're having on the world. Graduating from college is a landmark occasion. This is a moment to truly savor. Take this gift of an excellent education and go forth. The world really is what you make of it. I wish you all the best. Go out and make a difference. And congratulations to the class of 2011.